Okay. So, um, good evening. I am the substitute moderator for this panel, and I will introduce myself as the first speaker. <laughs> no. So, um, my name is Asaf Baltov. I work for the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, my title, which I'm in inter eternal conflict with, is Head of Global South Relationships. For, this, for the purposes of this um, talk, I run the grants program. That's all you need to know. <clears throat> so I call this talk Funds for Free Knowledge, uh, which I think may as well have been the name of the grants program, because that is what it does. Funds for Free Knowledge. I don't actually see what you see. Can we somehow get a compromise? No? Yes? Maybe? Yeah, I'll just... Uh, okay. This should do it. Okay. All right. So, <clears throat> getting right down to it. Can anyone, can everyone hear me? Should I use this? Um, so, first of all, why grant? Why do we grant money at all in the first place? Why do we do this? And I'm offering you my answers. We do it primarily to foster innovation, to encourage new things to happen, things that we did not hatch or plan at the foundation office in San Francisco. And funds can bridge the gap between having a good idea and actually being able to achieve success, to deliver it. Very often we feel <coughs> things, awesome things don't happen because there's a great idea, there's an opportunity, there's people willing to do it, there's just no money to pay for the Wi-Fi or the venue or the refreshments or travel or something. And so grants are a way to bridge that gap and to allow all that potential innovation to become actual innovation. And these, this innovation can happen, we think, primarily by the community, which in this case we use in the broad sense to include chapters, but not only chapters. Any community member, any group of community members can foster innovation and can apply for and receive grants. And it can also happen and this is a relatively <clears throat> new phase in our thinking by outside entities, by non-Wikimedians, by, by people or organizations outside the community who nevertheless have a proposal, an idea, a project that could really help with our mission um, even if their edit count is zero. Secondly, grants support the existing Wikimedia entities. This is a term you'll get, be, be getting used to. Wikimedia entities are all kinds of organizations that are recognized as being affiliated with the Wikimedia movement. The ones you know are the Wikimedia chapters, but a recent board resolution has decided to recognize new types of Wikimedia entities, namely thematic organizations and user groups, this thing is sort of still in process. There are no thematic organizations or recognized users group, user groups just yet. <clears throat> but the Affiliations Committee, formerly known as the Chapters Committee, is working on it. So those entities will be arriving and grants will support those entities in working towards movement goals. How is this distinct from innovation? Well, entities have costs, not all of which are completely innovative. Uh, the phone bills are not very innovative, but you need to pay them anyway. Um, and finally, we want to support those Wikimedia entities in building their capacity, in, in improving their own ability to design and execute projects. So some, some, in some cases, again, even if a, an activity or a project is not particularly innovative, it is felt that funding it would help that organization, that entity, grow, mature, gain experience, attract new members, and thereby 
allow future uh, innovative work towards our mission. So that is why we grant. That is why this program exists. <coughs> now, Wikimedia, uh, the Wikimedia Foundation has been offering grants since 2009. And uh, it used to be open to chapters only until early 2011. It has been open to anyone, any individual or organization, movement or not, um, can apply for grants. And the way it works is via a simple public application on the MetaWiki. Is there anyone here who does not know the MetaWiki, who's never been on Meta and is willing to admit it? Thank you. Okay. So, um, yeah, check it out. Meta.wikimedia.org is where we do all, all things meta, such as <laughs> grants. Um, and we have instructions in 15 languages and counting, translated by volunteers. Thank you very much. And we accept submissions in any language, exclamation point, question mark. There have never been applications in any language but English. Uh, correction. We have had a, an application from a group of Wikimedians in Morocco um, in Arabic. Uh, they have been kind enough to translate it into English themselves, but they did originally apply in Arabic. Uh, but the question mark is there because it's difficult. Uh, we are committed to allow grant applications in any language because we don't want the language to be, again, the thing that stands between the idea and its execution. And if we get <coughs> a grant request in a language that none of us can read, we will figure out a way to read it anyway. The, the big challenge is to allow the community discussion around that proposal. Uh, and discussions in our movement, when they happen across national borders, generally need to be in English for practical reasons. And so we will do our best to facilitate those discussions if and when we get grant applications in languages other than English. Um, so in case you have never seen this, <coughs> this is the grants information page. It is on Meta. It's at grants colon index. As you can see, it has, if you like, you can uh, read it in Japanese. Uh, but maybe we'll stick to English for this. Um, and it has instructions about the grants program, how to submit a grant, what are the guidelines, what you need to do, who is eligible, and there's a neat little wiki form here. All you need to do is pick a name for your organization or group, pick a name for your project, click this, so I don't know, blah, 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 blah. Click this, and it, you, you get a new page, you create a new page on Meta. I'm not vandalizing, I'm not gonna save this. Um, you get a new page on Meta that has a template pre-populated for you, and all you need to do is fill out the very simple form. Who you are, how much money you want, what do you need it for, and there are instructions here and examples, and it really is very simple. Anyone who has attempted to get a grant from a real granting organization will tell you this. If they have attempted this from the European <laughs> Union, doubly so. <coughs> Uh, also, on the grants page, while we're at it, uh, right, at, right at the top and in bold, there are links to a complete list of grant submissions and uh, grant requests and grant reports. Now, this is useful because if you are thinking of, is there a terrible echo here or is there anything I can do about it? Um, <clears throat> if you're thinking of submitting a grant, you can take a look at the grants we have already funded. They're all up here. It's all in public. And you can take a look at a grant that seems to be more or less along the lines you're thinking of and learn what their budget looked like and what the discussion about that other grant looked like. Um, and you may learn a lot of useful things that will save you time and increase the chances of your project getting funded. So uh, I don't know. Let's just pick one. Uh, so this is a grant by the Amical, our colleagues in, uh, in uh, Catalonia, and uh, that is an example of not a non-chapter receiving funding. And they have uh, filled out this uh, grant request, and it has a budget in a terrible wiki table. 
um, and notes and things and goals and descriptions of what it is that they're going to do. So this one is, is for a very uh, uh, diverse plan, a lot of different projects, so it's pretty long, but many grant requests are actually much shorter. Um, and so you can also click the discussion tab, uh, fondly known as the talk page, and you can see the discussion we have had about this, um, about this grant proposal, and you can learn from it. Um, yeah, so that was a very brief tour of uh, where the grant stuff lives on Meta, and I encourage you to check it out. So once you have submitted a proposal, we have open public discussion on that talk page of the grant proposal, and anyone, absolutely anyone, is welcome to participate in that discussion. Um, so if you have something to say, if you think it's a terrible idea, if you think it's a great idea, if you think it's a great idea but could be even greater, speak up, just, just comment on the talk page. Now there is a group that has volunteered to regularly review grant proposals and help advise both the applicants and the foundation, and that is the Grant Advisory Committee, fondly known as the GAC. Um, and their job is to review those requests. They are volunteers committed to doing that, um, and, and say something about it, even if it's nothing to add, this looks great, more power to you. Uh, but very often they would have other um, concerns, they would express those concerns, and the applicant can respond on the talk page until they are resolved. Very often it would be useful advice, suggestions, <clears throat> sometimes requests for clarification. It can sometimes be frustrating because you want the money already, right? Um, or they just don't get it. But, you know, sometimes they do not get it and you need to explain. And uh, we can come to an understanding. Anyway, it is infinitely better than just receiving a no. You know, the traditional process is you submit some proposal and you get no and you d you're not sure if it was no way in hell or hey, actually, if you just change this little thing, it would have been a yes. Um, so I still think it, it's infinitely better than just no. Um, so what percentage of grant proposals do we approve? Any guesses? Yes? I'm gonna say somewhere over 60%. Over 60%, any other guesses? 90. 90. 90%, yes. 10%, all right. The correct answer is 94.5%. Uh, we have approved 52, 52 proposals in the last fiscal year out of 55 proposals. So hey, we're just that kind of people. Um, how much money did we give out in the last fiscal year? Our fiscal year, the foundation's fiscal year, has just ended on July 1st. So it's a good, a good moment to take stock. We gave out $971,000 in grants out of just over a million requested. So some of the requests requested a certain amount of money and got just a little less. Uh, so, but we did fund 92% of the dollars requested. Uh, we don't have much time, so I'll just mention that we have had a fairly large grant of uh, $280,000. Uh, that was the largest grant we gave out, and that was to Wikimedia Sweden. Uh, the largest uh, sort of non-annual plan-based grant, the largest project or event grant, was $40,000 to fund Wikiconference India, run by the Indian community. And the smallest grant we had was $250 for uh, a showing at a, an exhibition in India. Um, yeah, the average grant runs from $2,000 to $10,000, more or less. So what do grants fund? They fund general outreach events, they fund GLAM events, they fund community workshops, they fund research. Uh, some of you may remember the Oral Citations Project that was funded by a grant. Um, they fund reimbursements, lots of reimbursements for all kinds of expenses that Wikimedians accrue while contributing content. So they go on photo hunts and we may pay the bus ticket or the train ticket, right? We never pay Wikipedians for content, you all know that, right? Nobody gets paid for editing Wikipedia or for taking photos but you could get reimbursed if you go to some expenses um, in an impactful way, right? We won't reimburse you for a trip to the Swiss Alps to take a picture, okay? Um, sorry, but anyway. Uh, and there are also all kinds of fees and legal expenses and printing and boring things, but we also fund those. Ultimately, we fund we volunteer empowerment. We fund the ability of volunteers to achieve 
their visions to, to go after things that they think are worthwhile if we agree. What do they not fund anymore? They do not fund paid staff for your chapter or organization. There were a couple of instances where grants did include an item for salaries. That's over now, but there's a redirect. Um, it's a redirect to the meta page FDC. You may have heard that acronym already in this conference. The new Funds Dissemination Committee will be handling all requests that include a budget item for staff. More on that later. So the Grant Advisory Committee is all volunteer. Like I said, it's advising both the applicants and the foundation. It's dispensing plenty of good advice and suggestions and many grants and many projects were better because of the aggregate experience of the GAC. There is some bike shedding. There is some quibbling over, do you really need $20 for biscuits? Why not $15? I know a place where you can get them for $15. Um, you know, that kind of thing. Not, not actually about biscuits, but that kind of thing. There is some bike shedding. Again, it can be frustrating. We, ha we started with 16 volunteer members. We're now down to 12, which is why we have had open nominations. Some of you may have seen me spamming the lists and saying, join the GAC, it's the new power, or something. Um, and we have had a lot of nominations. We're very happy with it, and we will be announcing the new GAC next week. Uh, we're late. We were supposed to announce it July 1st. We're, we'll be announcing it right after Wikimania. And basically, pretty much everyone who uh, applied uh, for the GAC and, and has a halfway credible um, sort of statement about it, their interest in being there will be accepted. It's a new, open, wide GAC. So, yeah. So after your grant was approved, and I'm nearing the end, um, you need to give us a report a public report about what you spent the money on, what you achieved, so that we can evaluate in <laughs> retrospect, was this a good idea, was this a good investment or not. Um, and very soon we will have systematic collection of the learnings from those grant reports. There are a lot of grant reports on Meta, but nobody reads them but me. Um, so we will start collecting that. Do you read them? Excellent, me and Pete. <laughs> Pete and I, we read their grant reports. Um, so we will start collecting these reports systematically to share with you guys so that you don't have to slog through the reports to find useful tidbits of knowledge. I do not have time to uh, present the participation support program other than saying it's basically a second grant program designed to fund your travel and accommodation for you, for community members, to attend non-Wikimedia events. Non-Wikimedia events, not to attend, I'm sorry, to participate to speak, to deliver a paper or a workshop or something, not just to show up. Okay, so a, a case in point would be a Wikipedian presenting a paper on anti-vandalism AI-based detection in a computer science conference. Okay, he's a Wikipedian, he wrote a tool, he's presenting it at a non-Wikimedia event, and we paid his travel and accommodation there. Uh, so that's, details are on Meta or talk to me. A couple of quick tips and I'm done. Before you submit a grant, talk to your community. Talk to your community. Post on your village pump or wherever appropriate for your community and say, hey, I'm thinking of this. I'm thinking of asking for a grant. Let's work on this together. Are there any other interested parties? Maybe people will tell you, hey, this is a terrible idea, or hey, this was already done, et cetera, et cetera. You'll get valuable feedback, and you'll get the support of your community, which counts. We are looking for initiatives that the community would like to see, not just some person. Um, remember your proposal doesn't need to be perfect, it's a wiki. Put it up there, we'll talk, okay? If something's not clear, if something's not good, we'll tell you, you'll fix it. Um, be open to refinements. We may not like a certain item in your proposal, but are willing to approve the rest. You'll need to make a decision. And of course, monitor the talk page, add it to your watch list. Refresh hysterically every 30 seconds. Okay, maybe not, but you know. Monitor the talk page so that you can interact with us and so that no more time than absolutely necessary goes by before we approve your grant. Remember, 94%. <clears throat> um, and after we approve your grant, do develop the grant report as things happen. The moment you do things, the moment you spend money, start updating a little draft report. You will thank yourself later when the time comes to submit the report and you don't remember anything. So draft the report, keep all the receipts, celebrate your successes in public, but also share the difficulties. You will thank yourself later for sharing your difficulties. And uh, finally, if you need to spend differently than what was agreed on, you got a budget for a certain thing and you need to spend a little differently, that's okay, it happens. 
talk to us first. It's in the grant agreement. Um, anyway, finally, look for serendipity and side benefits. While you're doing work that is funded, look for opportunities to do serendipitous outreach or to, to get that volunteer who volunteered to help you carry stuff. While you're carrying stuff, talk to that volunteer about editing Wikipedia, etc. I mean, try to make the most of whatever it is that we funded to try and achieve more value for your organization, your chapter, your group. Um, I guess we don't have time for questions and answers, but maybe at the end. Yeah. And uh, thank you very much. This is my email. Um, so my name is Delphine Ménard, and I am the treasurer of uh, Wikimedia Germany. Uh, and this talk is about why does Wikimedia need money when we have volunteers? I mean, seriously, why do we need money? We do have volunteers, right? So <laughs> the idea here is uh, to try uh, and ask questions rather than give answers. I mean, I actually don't have an answer to that question. I hope you'll help me find an answer for it. Um, and uh, uh, give you a bit of insight in the different projects uh, that, are, that have been done in the Wikimedia movement. <laughs> so th the first question I ask myself when thinking about this is, what is a volunteer? Um, and the answer I came up with is, basically it's someone who has a set of skills, a certain amount of time, and a certain amount of motivation to give to a cause. So for us, it's free knowledge. Uh, it's the <laughs> supporting free knowledge, uh, uh, disseminating free knowledge. Um, and this forms kind of a, of a block, right? So it's, it's, it, it goes all together. Um, and then they come to an organization or a project, and they say, you know, I want to give that set of things that I have uh, to you. And uh, the question is, how do they fit in? So right, we have the block, and then we have the Tetris kind of thing, which is where do these, th where <coughs> where does the set of skills, uh, the set of um, of time, and the set of of motivation actually fit in in the grand scheme of things? So, um, when does a, a volunteer come into play? Uh, in regard to what we do at Wikimedia, uh, there is a necessity, which is uh, we produce content, and without the volunteers, we just wouldn't have anything. So I guess uh, uh, that kind of makes the thing the thing happen uh, in in its grand uh, in its grand scope. And opportunity, opportunity. I mean, I think Asaf gave a, a pretty good idea of what an opportunity opportunity could be, which is basically someone has <coughs> uh, th something that they want to do at a given point in time, or there is an event that could benefit from a talk from uh, so, uh, about about free knowledge. Uh, there are things that can be. Uh, done with partners, uh, all the glam outreach, these kind of things that might be one opportunity at a given time. And the volunteers come in and uh, will help facilitate this opportunity. So there's, there's a bit of these two aspects. And um, uh, the, the question I wanted to ask uh, myself about this, why do we need money? Because we have volunteers and they can actually answer this necessity and, and these opportunities, is what do volunteers uh, bring to the table, or rather, what do unpaid people bring to the table, and what do paid people uh, bring to the table? And I would like to ask you this question. I mean, do you have an answer to this? What, what is it that um, a volunteer does or doesn't do, and what is it that a paid person does or doesn't do? Yeah. Sorry? Yes, not many volunteers will do things that are boring. Volunteers can say whatever they want. Anything else? Yeah. Uh, volunteer participation isn't always as important. Yeah. So volunteers uh, have uh, participation that can be not con that can be not co consistent. Yeah. The, the volunteer might be more passionate about the topics that, uh, uh, that they are working for as someone who's getting paid for it. So I did, I did ask myself the question, and I came up with um, perceived weaknesses. And I, I wanted to call it perceived weaknesses because I don't agree with all of these, but I know that these are the things that people also think when they think about a volunteer, someone who is not paid. Um, so someone who is not paid has an unsteady amount of time, what, what, uh, exactly what you were saying. 
uh, the commitment can vary, uh, and they can disappear, right? <laughs> um, they have unpredictable skills, <laughs> and uh, that means also that sometimes someone will come with you know, a set of skills that just doesn't fit, you know, go back to the Tetris thing of thing, which is, it just doesn't, it just doesn't fit, you know, like they have tons of energy, ton of, of time, but the skills that they bring to the table just won't, won't match the needs that you have. Um, the focus might be more difficult to achieve, and uh, by focus, I mean, it, it, it uh, goes a bit uh, with, with a skill thing, which is, uh, they might also kind of have a fleeting focus that goes f jump from one thing to the other. Uh, you all know how it is when you open a, a Wikipedia page to l read upon a subject and you end up, you know, uh, 20 pages later reading about something completely different. Uh, there is uh, something of that also uh, in, in the volunteer attention. Not again, these are perceived uh, uh, weaknesses. Um, uh, and they don't know their limits sometimes. Sometimes they take way too much upon themselves and uh, actually don't manage to you know, deliver, so to speak, what they've promised their themselves they would deliver. Um, and they have a fleeting commitment, it was said uh, earlier, which is you know, one day they will be 24, 24, 24 uh, there, and then suddenly uh, they won't be there anymore. <laughs> Paid people, on the contrary, the perceived weaknesses are they cost money. Well, that's, you know, that's, that's the idea. Um, their available time is limited. Again, this is just a perceived thing. You're like if you work, you work for a certain amount of time, or you should be working for a certain amount of time. Um, focus can be limited, and again, it's it's uh, is to say someone will, will come with a set of skills, and uh, maybe they will <laughs> they will just kind of stay in that set of skills and not try to uh, to to look away from it. And um, perceived ownership. That was something I was discussing with S J and. <laughs> the idea of perceived ownership is to say, if you paid to do something, it's like your area, your thing. So people think, like a volunteer that's that's looking at someone who's paid to do something might say, well, I can't really step in and you know and and do something there. Uh, so sometimes it's kind of a, of a of a barrier between paid and unpaid. Um, <laughs> however, we've been a bit negative, or you have you you did say something uh, about the that didn't work. The strengths, right? Um, eclectic and unlimited creativity. I mean, the pool of people out there is so big that uh, basically you could have every single idea in the world uh, right there. Um, intrinsic motivation. The idea is that, as you say, people are passionate about uh, about working in their volunteer capacity. They really have something that uh, that is there, and they won't, even though they won't do the boring work. Uh, they might actually, because their passion for the bigger picture or something is is so so big that they will do it. <laughs> they could they cost nothing to little. When I mean little, it's more uh, it's not so much paying them, but paying you know like dri uh, driving them around or uh, the 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 flyers they're going to print and things like this. But th the cost is limited in comparison to a person that you have, uh, and they do not count their hours. Uh, I think in Wikimedia world, it's uh, it's actually very. Very, uh, very true. Uh, on the other side, the perceived strength of, of paid people is like you can count their hours and you can count on their hours because they're supposed to do them, right? Uh, so uh, that's they have focused skills that also are selected to fill needs. So if you have a gap in a project or uh, in the way you want to run things, you can actually select someone to fill that gap. And that's, uh, as I said earlier, it's the, the volunteers don't, the right volunteer doesn't always come at the right time, so they don't always kind of fill that gap perfectly. Um, and they have a contractual accountability. I mean, the idea that it's kind of a running gag that uh, volunteers are not accountable. I don't believe that. I believe that uh, volunteers can be ho held accountable and uh, that it is a, an, important th uh, an important thing also to stress. But uh, with paid, paid people, there is a contractual uh, Accountability. I mean, they just have to do it, or you know, they can they can get fired. So the question is: Are Wikimedians afraid of money? Um, as you see my face right here. <laughs> um, no, it's not. Uh, Eric was talking to me, and uh, I was very scared. But we were not talking about money. We were talking about I don't know. What, I don't remember what it was. But it was quite a it was kind of nice picture. Thank Cat for taking it. So are Wikimedians afraid of money? And um, I think that there is something of a 
bad karma relationship with money altogether. It starts with the fact that we produce uh, free content and that the whole commercial part of things, although yes, we produce free content that can be reused, uh, there are a lot of people who first don't really know about it, uh, and there's a lot, lot of people who would actually like their content to stay very, very, very free so that nobody can make money with it, with it and stuff like that. So there is, in the very um, core of what we do, some kind of a, a strange relationship with, with the money and the commercial aspect and you know, being paid to do things. And um, there's also like, I, I, I want to think about the, the ad question, you know, should we have ad on, ads on Wikipedia? Should we make money with the content we actually produce and what the kind of, of flame wars that it starts and things like that. So there is, there is something of a difficult relationship with anything that has to do with money. Um, another thing that uh, I've asked myself is what makes Wikimedia just a tiny bit different from other nonprofits um, or most nonprofits? Um, and the thing is, Producing content is not tangible. It's not something that you can hold in your hand. It's not something concrete. It's not something that, you know, where you go and take a shovel and uh, build wells in the desert, or uh, you go and take your time and, and stand in the cold to, uh, to give soup to homeless people. I mean, there is nothing that you can really grab and, gra grab and grasp. So the transition to, into the offline world is actually quite difficult. It's actually also quite recent, I would say. I mean, it's like, we, I think if, if, if I uh, just know a bit about the history, Wikipedia started completely offline. And uh, people maybe met, but they talked about the offline thing. And they started doing things, uh, sorry, online, I'm sorry, online. And so people maybe met, but they did talk about the online thing. I mean, uh, to, to sit at a, at a meetup, and have all these Wikipedians talking about, you know, their pages and, and giving link, talking in links and, and red links and blue links and things like this is quite an interesting experience. Um, and the, the actual doing of things and promoting of free knowledge, like on the ground, which is not online, came just a bit later. And, and, and it came kind of naturally, but it's, it's been a, a transition that wasn't there. I mean, it wasn't something that you had from the start. Um, and ever since I've been in Wikimedia, it's been what, seven years, seven years? Um, I've realized that, and that, that's being, you know, part of a chapter that was trying to actually spend money. Um, and as far as I know, most of us, uh, mo most of the chapters or the foundation are in underspending. So it's really hard to spend money um, to promote free knowledge. Um, and not because, again, this is because we don't have anything, we don't sell anything, like we don't make, build anything that's, that you can like not, not brick and mortar. And so, <coughs> sorry. And so in the end, the only thing we can really invest in, and I'll take the servers out of this, you know, I, I know that there is this one thing that, yes, that is tangible that you can actually touch, but the only thing we can really invest in is people. Um, and, because we started kind of in an ethereal or virtual world, it's really hard to invest, invest in people. And the core volunteer work is done for free, so the produ producing of content. And what happens, what I've observed, is that when Wikimedians start working offline, they don't want to be paid, and they don't know how to be paid, um, even though I believe sometimes it is a necessity. And uh, this whole um, thing was, how does, how does this, this constellation actually play out? What does it mean when we're trying to further our mission? Uh, what does it mean that people are not good at getting paid to do things, for example? And uh, Wikimedia Germany has a, has a grant program, which is a bit like, <coughs> like the grant program, oh, yeah, that's <laughs> which is called the Community Project Budget. Um, and basically, we allocate uh, 250,000 euros for projects that are above, that start above 5,000 euros. And the idea is that they have to be related to Wikimedia projects. So uh, we have a, a ton of other things that we do that might not be directly related to Wikimedia projects, but this one is really something that we put at the disposal of the community directly. And we try to encourage people to apply with grants uh, and, uh, and ideas that they want to implement 
in the in the in the in the frame of this budget. And uh, I'll just give you two examples <coughs> of things that work and things that don't work. Um, we had two of, of our the biggest project that we actually approved. One was uh, the s uh, a developer working on making uh, open street maps faster in the multilingual multilingualism uh, aspect of them because it was really kind of slow and 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 so he we funded someone who and we are paying him uh, for uh, working on this and making this faster so that it can be used in Wikipedia in all Wikipedias and so that you basically you get your your map with the uh, with the language you uh, you were in rather than have to load something forever and things like that and the the way he presented the project was very simple it's like this is something that I might do one day like he has the skills to do it but right now I need to have bread on my table and right now um, it's something that is actually impeding uh, the use and reuse of our content so right now I, won't, I would like to do it and be paid for it because this is my job, he's a developer. And uh, so there was a, a real explanation of why he wanted to be paid uh, and uh, that's, that's why uh, we funded it uh, also. Another project that was a really interesting project about uh, integrating professional moderators in Wikipedia discussions, uh, which was a very well thought out pro uh, project, um, <laughs> which really had taken contacts and, and made a project plan and everything, um, was to be run, was to be run, uh, by a volunteer. And when we actually talked uh, with that person, we tried to kind of prod and say, this is a really demanding project, and are you sure that you can do it as a volunteer? Like, that you can run and make this project happen as a volunteer. And she assured us that it was no problem, it was perfect, no problem, and then she disappeared. So we actually had allocated the funds and the project uh, couldn't happen anymore. So this is where I say, these are the concerns uh, I had when I started thinking about this presentation, is to say, there was a really, really great idea. And on the one side, someone you know, said, had no problem saying, I'm gonna get paid for it. And on the other, someone did. Uh, and in the end, one, ha one idea is happening and the other one isn't. So another thing that I was uh, talking to, and I was talking to uh, lots of people uh, around here, is the fellowship. So the fellowship is a program that allows uh, basically people who have an ID to spend time uh, on, on doing something that they might be doing as a volunteer, but they want to expand further. Um, it might be research, it might be like being in the community and, and, and doing different things. Uh, there's quite a few fellows out there, maybe you, you, you will, they will tell you better what it is. But I was talking to, to Stephen and uh, the things he said that being a, he was a fellow and he says being a fellow allows to bring ideas further than you would if you were just a volunteer. Uh, you have more time, it's an enabler. And at the same time, it's a kind of a nice position because you're not paid staff, right? So you're paid for your time, but you're still kind of in between this, this volunteer and, uh, and, and paid position. It kind of allows a smooth transition, and it allows also, and that was very interesting uh, uh, to discuss, it allows to define or undefine potential positions and pot potential things that we as, a, as organizations might want to pursue. So someone will do a, 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 a fellowship for six months on a subject and then realize that a, they just don't want to ever do it again, or uh, B, they just not the right person for it, or C, it doesn't advance the mission as they thought it would advance the mission, so they're just kind of giving up. On the contrary, it could be, uh, uh, the result of a fellowship could be, wow, I can't believe we haven't that had that, you know, in a, in a kind of continuous and uh, an important way be, uh, before that, and uh, we really need to carry that further so that this might result in a, either in a job description or, or the person being further employed uh, uh, by the organization. So that's really interesting because it shows how uh, being paid sometimes really enables uh, uh, things that you, you don't have time to do as a volunteer. Um, I'm gonna do this very fast, but I think one of the most, the, or the best examples of how paid and unpaid uh, might play out is Wikimania, how Wikimania is every year done again from scratch, basically. Um, there is one thing that I've, I've, I've read quite a bit on, on volunteers, and one thing was interesting is that volunteers who do great projects, they usually burn out, and they don't 
do much assessment of what worked and what didn't. It's part kind of the volunteer things, like you, you just don't have time and don't, you, don't ha you don't want to see that thing anymore, so you just kind of uh, leave it. And so uh, Wikimania, why? Because Wikimania is a big conference, so there are lots of, of these Tetris uh, pieces, uh, and there's a lot of different constellations where you could have, I don't know, someone who takes care of the visas, who could be paid to do it, across like six months. I mean, it's <laughs> I know it's a sore subject for, <laughs> for some people, but uh, and the next year someone, <laughs> that means I, I should be finished already. Uh, and and the, the year after, you actually have a volunteer that has that set of skills and that could do it and you don't have to pay this person. So it, it will change from one year to the other. And the idea is, you know, how do you actually manage to, I don't know, to put these pieces together and make sure that in the end the whole thing runs smoothly. And Wikimania is a, is a good example of what sometimes works and what doesn't. But anyway, that's my last slide. So the question is how do we ensure that there is a better adequation between um, the needs, the skills, the time, all of these things? Um, and I, remember, I, I want you to remember, because I think that the, the, the biggest problem is this, we forget that there is not much else that we can invest in except people. So, I mean, we have lots of money to support Wikipedia, to support free knowledge, and at, this, at the same time, we don't, we don't always have an outlet to let it out, I mean, to, to use it. Um, the problem is the, uh, this adequation of great ideas, available skills and time. And so the solutions, and that's, that's in the different conversations I've had over the past three days, uh, uh, with different people is uh, I think that there is a need for more leadership training, training, uh, a need for project management training, which means it doesn't really mean that people are going to be paid, you know, by default to do things, but that at least they get some, some real um, important help to actually manage to bring those projects to fruition. And uh, in, in the case of our, of our, of our community pro project budget, for example, we've decided to have, before applications start, a workshop on how to, how to write a project, what it means to lead a project, and so that people, if they don't do it themselves because they have problems being a Wikimedian, you know, in actually getting paid, that maybe they, they do have a line in their budget that says, you know, oh yes, there will be a project manager that's gonna be paid to make sure that this project comes to an end. I mean, we're talking about projects that are like about 50,000 or, hopefully even more than that, uh, 50,000 euros, that would be 60, 70,000 uh, dollars. Um, and I think that there is a need to uh, make being paid to further the mission not be evil anymore, uh, that we need to, I don't know how to do this, this is a communication thing, but I think there is a lot we could do to try and make sure that we actually implement all the great ideas that are out there and that would really further our mission. And again, I'm not saying it, it means everything has to be, be done by paid people, but that we have to consider sometimes to be paid to do things. And uh, uh, I think we'll, we'll have questions afterwards, so I would like to hear your ideas uh, about this. And um, that's it. <laughs> so we're the moderator. Where is the third presen presenter? One? Microgrants? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, Microgrants and Thomas is going to present. No, no, no problem. So Thomas is the chair of Wikipedia Poland? Yeah. <laughs> you are? Yeah? <laughs> I don't keep track of everybody. Could, can, you, can you come here? Oh, yes, because I'm just showing the, the pages, oh, right? Oh. 
So, sorry about it, but it's not prepared really because other guy should talk about it. And his idea was to make a comparison study of various microgrant system in various countries. I am not ready for this, but I can just very briefly show how the Polish system works. Uh, it just started working uh, five years ago or something, and actually we have, as you could see, the eighth edition of this. The edition are sometimes half a year, sometimes they are longer. So therefore this is eight, although it started five years ago. And the approach is really very, very simple. We have just a commission which is selected by people who would like to be there by our board. And there are four till seven people sometimes. And they made all decision on IRC channel. It's a given day, one, one day in a week when they meet. And if there is an application, so they just in public discuss this briefly, and they accept it or reject it. Sometimes they ask uh, uh, submitters to, to provide some more details. So, and this is the main page. The, the main page is located on our uh, f, 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 uh, association wiki, but it's also announced uh, f, uh, on Wikipedia and other uh, Polish wiki projects, usually in bars or in uh, f, uh, other places where, where the uh, announcements are made. And this just exemplary successful stories about this, <coughs> just to give the people an idea for what they can apply. And uh, if I just show two successful projects uh, which are quite funny. The first one is, this is the Kashubian uh, Coats of, uh, of Arms. And this guy applied for a book about this uh, Kashubian Coats of Arms in order to uh, make them themselves in SVG and then to give a description of them. Uh, if, uh, and then he created several hundreds of these coats. So this is, in a moment, so this is the, the his works. He, this is the, just a category in Polish Wikipedia about each coat of arm. And this is one of those. This is really nice SVG picture made by him. And then story about it, mainly based on this book. But as I remember, he asked for two, uh, two, two books, and he collected information from both of them. And the another guy just asked for uh, money, mainly for travel, but also for some books to make the uh, to, to make uh, pictures and description of all cultural heritage monuments in just one country in Poland. And he made uh, all of them. F these uh, categories are just for single, single heritage, which has several files, just showing how does it look like. And then it, there are links to the articles in Polish Wikipedia about them. So this is actually the, the current page when people can apply. At the beginning, there, there is a link to the regulation, how does it work, and then just by clicking here, someone can uh, apply, and the application form is made as simple as possible. It's much simpler than, uh, than, than uh, f f GATS applications, for example, but they are for much, much, much less money, of course. <laughs> and then what we re required just, there must be a name of the person, the nickname, in fact, so they, they can apply completely anonym, anonymously. They have to provide their names only to, to, to the, f even not the, bo the, uh, the commission, but just to our uh, treasurer who just sent the money. And then there is just the idea what it's all about. And then there is some explanation why it's useful for Wikimedia projects. And then uh, there is the uh, f, uh, f explanation w uh, how long does it take to finish the project and what is going to be output of this, and then for how much money the person apply for this one, for example, and vast majority of them like that are mainly to their application for books to be used as a source for 
And this is, uh, for example, he applied for 150 slotes, which is roughly uh, 50 euros, slightly less than 50 euros. <laughs> Uh, and then uh, some people found that it could be even by cheaper. So for, for 127 slots in an online uh, <laughs> bookshop. Uh, and then after this, the f commission meets on IRC and just put the brief explanation. This is absolutely OK. We support this. Actually, there are five members in uh, the commission. So this is five was four, zero. Uh, was uh, no, uh, against and zero was uh, just not voting. <coughs> and then it's accepted and, and the people can, can get this money. And then on this page, this is the, an example of rejected, for example. Uh, oh. This is accepted, accepted, accepted. Yes, yes, but it was halfly rejected, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And there are just e e examples because the rejected are at the bottom of the page. But here, when this uh, mark is green, it means that it's actually finished. This is accepted and finished. And then there is no requirement to provide the detailed report for such a small amount of money it really doesn't make sense. But sometimes the applicant, sometimes even commission itself is checking if this person did what, what, what was applied for. And if someone will not do this, this money are not taken back from this because it would be very complicated even from legal point of view, but simply if this person apply again, probably he, she won't get money again. Oh, this is actually rejected. Maybe this one is not so interesting, so I show another one and explain what's going on when there is good but rejected for some reasons. Oh, it was really interesting application. This is called Babcia means uh, grandma. This is Grandma Hania. <coughs> And Grand Mahania had, uh, this is one of the oldest editors in Polish Wikipedia, by the way, and she had uh, old transparencies of the picture taken by his husband in before Second World War of, po of uh, cities in Poland and abroad. And the idea was to buy a scanner, a special scanner for this, and then to scan this and send it to, to commons. And the problem with this was that the project was really nice. But uh, the Grand Mahania is actually the, uh, uh, she is a uh, uh, mother of uh, one of the our board members. So it was a conflict of interest. So then the uh, uh, commission decided that it's not going to take this decision alone and it sent it to our board. <laughs> and this is the explanation why it's not accepted. And then the decision is sent to our board. And every applicant has such a possibility uh, that if he, she is not happy with the decision, so then the decision can go to the board. And sometimes, it's not very often out of the, I don't know, I have no statistics actually, but it's very sim similar statistics like in case of the GAC. 90, 95% of, of projects are accepted. Uh, and uh, 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 when it's not accepted, so then vast majority of people accept it, but maybe one, two projects a year are sent to the board. And then s the board just made the decision, and uh, this is also the story that uh, it sometimes happens that if the boards overrule the decision of the commission, so then some members of commission decide to quit. And then we have to find someone else to, <laughs> to, 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 to be in a commission. So this is, it, will, it happens two times. In one case even, which is really, really hot, uh, uh, which was really, really hot, it, it ended up in such a situation that commission decided to give up completely. And then we had to find a uh, uh, new one. <coughs> and it was about the, uh, it was a, the psychologist uh, working on the uh, sexual articles in Wikipedia, and she applied for a book 
uh, several books about the, f the scientific books about the sexuality of human, and it wasn't very clear why she was rejected. She did uh, quite a lot of good articles, but it was strange story. So, and it ended up at the, 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 at that time. And that's it. Th the system is very very simple. It works for five years till now, with sometimes problems, but usually quite smoothly. There is, for example, a member of commission here sitting. <laughs> and what is also interesting, uh, uh, the commission is a little bit a kind of the starting point of the Wikipedians to go to the uh, more serious work in uh, our association. Because, for example, Natalia was first a member of the commission, and actually she is member of our board, and it's quite it happens quite often that these members go to the board later. So that's the end of the story, right? I have a quick comment. So first of all, Tomasz is a member. <laughs> Beside that, he's also a member of the foundation's GAC, the GAC, and is one of the most active members and has really helped a lot of grants and deserves another round of applause for that. And secondly, following what he just said, um, the GAC too is a good preparation for the FDC. If you want to make decisions about millions of dollars, um, <laughs> joining the GAC and getting some experience in reviewing grants is not a requisite, but uh, could really you know, make you a more attractive candidate for the FDC. So I think, I guess we're gonna take questions, the three of us, so um, if you have questions, just go ahead. I think so. There's a wireless microphone over there. <laughs> There's a wireless microphone over there. Questions? Yeah, that's just a question. Just turn it on. Yeah. Questions? Questions? Yeah, there's a microphone. Wait, wait, wait. There's a wireless microphone. Microphone. Over there. Oh. I had a question with uh, regards to um, how to. Um, um, it seems like it, uh, catharsis is needed for those um, uh, Wikipedians that have issues with money, um, especially from your um, presentation. There's um, definitely the, uh, the obvious need for money for various things to be done, but there's the ideology that um, uh, money corrupts the soul and it's bad and it's, and it's negative. And, and so do you have a, um, a cure-all um, for... <laughs> for this type of thinking, because just from looking at this, it seems like uh, m money will actually push free knowledge even further. And so how do you deal with the volunteers and the, mi the mindset um, with, with not being offensive to those that are completely opposed to money, but realizing on the other end that it's completely necessary in order to push projects forward, especially globally? So I think. Is that, is that working? Yeah. Um, I think one of the first things is to be very careful because as I put my Tetris thing, I mean, I, I, it just came to me like this, really, like this Tetris thing where, where you try to fit exactly the pieces together, um, is to be careful not to um, fund something where you have 10 volunteers that have the skills, the time, and the motivation to be doing. So like, you're not gonna pay someone or, or you know, pay their time uh, for something that you know there are others that will do it in the same amount of time. So that's the first thing, so be very careful about knowing your environment so that you don't uh, brush the susceptibilities and you don't, you know, you don't go against things. Um, otherwise, I would be of, of a more like, like, be bold and just do it. Uh, I think before a good project just gets completely forgotten, um, I think you j we just have to do it. I think that uh, there comes a point where um, you know, it might be something, I mean, uh, uh, being a chapter, uh, uh, being member uh, in a chapter that, that has staff, for example, it might happen that if a project just doesn't happen because the volunteers are not there, that will just take the idea and, and make it happen. Um, and I think that's, that's also there, or find someone else who's ready to be paid and, and lead the project, you know? So I think that there has to be a certain amount of carefulness and uh, and be bold and, and, and really initiative and just, just do it because in the end, otherwise, it doesn't get done. 
and it's a really hard balance to strike. But I think I think we're learning too. I mean, I think there are more and more people uh, who are becoming staff or who have less problems being paid. I mean, the fellowship program is is growing uh, quite a bit, uh, and I think it's it's extremely interesting to see that. And I think it's just going to happen more and more. Um, and you can't really just you know change the mindset. So. So the answer is no. You don't have a cure all. No, I, I'm sorry. No, I do not have a cure all. Questions? Other questions, please. There's a mic. I don't think we should try to cure the, the fear of money. I think money is scary. I love what you've said about investing in people and the fact that we need sometimes to uh, allow someone to spend their whole life or like their whole you know time during a period of time working on on um, a Wikimedia project. And I, I'm not going to argue with that, but at the same time, money in the world we live in is seriously connected to power. Money always comes with a power relationship. And something I worry about, just this is my first Wikimania, and so I'm, I'm like taking in all of this culture at once that I've only seen from an you know, online perspective before. And I see all of this, this money connected to it. You know, it's like a conference that was kind of cheap to attend and like Google is sponsoring it and there's a State Department thing and there's 80 people who work for Mik Wikimedia. Um, and I, I do worry about the, the power relationships that might become entrenched there. Like, if the State Department is paying for Jim Wales to go give talks in other countries, is he allowed to s say bad stuff about the American government and their potential they're, they're relationship not. to Wikipedia? They're not. You misunderstood. Uh, just to set the record straight. They help him get visas yeah, visas. yeah, he travels on his own. They budget. help him get visas. Okay. Well, but so. Um, it does seem like, like the Wikimedia Foundation is walking a really delicate political line, and I do think there are risks involved if, if people have to toe the same line, line as them, potentially, in their you know, public face. So I, I, I haven't like, seen any direct censorship or anything as a result of Wikimedia grants, but I think it's something we all need to be really, really aware of and, and sensitive to. Um, can I make a comment? Um, so um, I think as uh, Judge Brandeis said, sunshine is the best disinfectant. Uh, and our transparency, the fact we do all this grant making, all three programs discussed here are all in public on the wikis, which is where Wikipedians live. It's not off on some, you know, download this add-on to look at our financials kind of uh, paywall or something. You know, it's all on the wiki. It's all right there. You can do watch lists. And people do. Some people, you know, some people care, including people who are not applicants, not from the chapter, not, you know, they just care. They just want to see what's going on with grants. And if there are more people who care, if you care, I invite you to, first of all, apply to join the GAC. Secondly, um, take a look at grants, you know, and tell us what you think. Okay, um, my name is Dubisan from South Africa, and I work with a small language called Shitsonga. I have uh, encountered few editors who have left the editing because they've had problems with connectivity. It's a huge problem in Africa. People only have access to internet at work or at varsity. When they leave those environments, there is no way to connect them. Would the Wikimedia Foundation be looking at uh, helping such people to maybe even get uh, low-tech um, tablets like the ones that the One Child, uh, One Laptop Foundations are doing in, in African states. Uh, for people who either have proven that they have edited in Wikipedia and it is a problem for them to get accessibility and so on, and also work with chapters like ourselves who can uh, go to those schools, go to universities and see how people are actually ac accessing the internet and assess whether they have need of uh, such low-tech um, equipment? Um, that's an excellent question. Uh, the answer is maybe. It depends on whether we can make find a model that works. The, as you can appreciate, there are questions of abuse and scalability of such a project. And you know who manages this? Manages this? Who oversees this? How do we determine what are the criteria? But it's certainly, I think, worth pursuing. So, um, if there are people who care about this and have ideas about how we could design something that is scalable and that reasonably 
protects us from from just handing out hardware to people on the you know on the hope that they may edit a little. Um, it, it's a, it's a, it's worth developing. You know, once we have such a model, we will consider funding it. And I would actually add that there are probably organizations out there who do that better than us, but that we actually support those people to write grants to these to these to these other organizations that we actually tell them you know that they really do a great work in what we do might be also an option to explore something where you have you know we don't all have the same uh the same work or the same skills in in that in that nonprofit world and this might be an option to explore to see you know how can uh, and then you'd, you'd write a grant to go and, and see these people to you know to to present your grant application to get terminals, for example. That that would be that's something that would come to mind right there. Absolutely. Hi, I want to ask about the relationship between the grant uh, program to the chapters. I can imagine you know two cases, for example, about someone that asking for a grant from the Poland or the German chapter and was denied because a million of reasons, maybe. Uh, the person is not uh, good enough to do the project. Maybe the community have a problem with that person. So after that, you're going to the grant to the foundation grant program and asking for a grant. So the question: If it's going to be, if it's not, not if it's going to be, if it there is any connection uh, that you know you're asking the chapter about the grant uh, propos proposal that they ask, and a different a different case can be you know we're asking for uh, money for a project that already you know the chapter is planning or doing? It's yeah, that's another very good question. Um, it's a sensitive topic uh, because we need to remember that a chapter in country X does not own the community in country X. It exists, it rises out of the community, it serves the community, it supports the community, but ultimately it is a minority of the community and we need to be careful not to say, well, we'll just ask Chapter X what they think, and if they don't like it, then you know, we say no. It cannot be as easy as that. There, there are also often personality conflicts within chapters. Anyone who's ever been in a chapter knows that, uh, which sometimes may, may make some of the decisions uh, questionable. But we, we, the foundation, don't want to be the, the jury in that. We don't want to decide who was right in some chapter rivalry or anything, which is why it's very difficult for us to formally make this part of the process. Um, but what we, we, what we want to do, is, and we also have a problem of finding out, right? If nobody tells us that this person or this request has already gone through some microgrants uh, process that is only in Polish, it is kind of hard for us to, to notice. Um, so informal consultation certainly uh, can take place, and it can certainly sometimes help the foundation make better decisions, um, whether they are yes or no. Uh, I'm not sure we can do much more than an informal consultation. Uh, but again, the community can help us, can help us notice. And I remind you, everyone is welcome to speak up on talk pages, not just the GAC. Uh, so the community, again, can be the, you know, keep everyone honest, as we say in America. Uh, yeah, I, I remember one such an, say, evil case with GAC with an Indian guy who applied for some kind of, oops, for some kind of scholarship. Uh, okay for some kind of scholarship uh, and if uh, uh, he was not liked by the uh, f f Indian chapter for some reasons and uh, as you saw the GAC uh, discussion uh, of, of, of application is public so they were really lengthy discussion the money was really small I don't ra remember three or four hundred dollars something like this and the discussion was as long that I just at the end I just wrote that I calculated it was fifteen thousand words here, so it it was ten 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 uh, cents per word when you calculate the, the number. So it was really a waste of time, in fact, right? But anyway, this might happen. I mean, if you apply first for a for a grant to your chapter, so then you might expect that people from chapter will aggressively attack you on GAC page as well. I, I don't know how to solve this. In that case, I have mixed feeling about this 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 application because uh, it was hard to evaluate. Theoretically, it looks it looked quite nice, but after reading what the people from Indian chapter was writing, so you s we started thinking if this is really good or, or not. So 
I don't know how to solve this, this because it, it was the, the, the internal discussion or even queries in, in India moved to the GAC. Uh, we have time for one more question, but I would just add that this is very true what Tomas was saying, but I would like to remind you that this also happens on Wikipedia. We, we spend hours on talk pages discussing whether or not a name should contain a dash. We do this because we care. We want things to be right and correct. And, and ultimately, much time was wasted, right? But hopefully, the dash is there or not there for very good and informed reasons. So likewise, you know, in grant discussions, we may spend a lot of time arguing about whether or not to spend those $400, but hopefully everybody emerges from that process, even if frustrated, a little wiser and a little better informed about the context surrounding that decision. Final question. Um, just a, um, a comment. I put up, um, I, I was taking notes here on an etherpad and I did tweet it, um, but I didn't see many people logging in. So um, I know this is completely unofficial, but if anyone wants to check whether I've represented their comments correctly, they can look at the Twitter feed. I did put the hashtag on. I put the, uh, media hash uh, the Wikimania hashtag on. Yeah. Um, I'll be happy to contribute some additional links if, if you want. And I just want to set the record straight nobody owns the community. Yes. It sounded weird. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. <laughs>